I want you to spend some time today. This is your assignment. I want you to spend some time today going through the, I want you to spend time going through the news stories. I want you to spend some time, I want you to go through daily news. I want you to go through a lot of the places where you would not necessarily go. Do yourself a favor. This is your assignment. I want you to go to CNN and uh, MSDNC, wherever, wherever you would like. Learn to read the enemy's intel. This is critical. And I want you to go and I want you to see what was the result, what was the reaction, what was the take, what was the movement from last night's big radio city to do. Now, this is critical. Now, I know many of you fine folks might say to yourself, I don't really care. And I understand that. I know it's, it's, it's difficult. But if there's one thing that you learn during our sessions, and by the way, these are tutorial. These are sessions for you to learn, for you to learn and to understand how they work. We have to read intel. We have to read data. We have to find out what the enemy are doing. And one of the things that we have to do in terms of the enemy is to find out specifically what they are telling you and how they are lying to you. And last night's Radio City was a bust. I have been scouring. Mrs. L has assisted me. We have been looking through everything, everything, scouring all of the news, all of the stories to see crowds of people inside to see this absolute love fest in New York City, Radio City Music Hall, home of the Rockettes, home of everything. And you had this half-assed, when Lizzo is the biggest name, Lizzo? Now, what does that mean? They can't even get big, big names. Where were the Clooney? Think about this. Think about something very important. All of the supposed A-listers who would say, you owe us. Go through the list. Clooney, Barbara Streisand. I don't give a damn. We're calling in the markers. We have supported you. You have been on our team. We have basically created your, your uh, careers and the like. We, are, we have created this. We're calling in the markers and we want this now. Now. Do you hear me? Think about this. Think about what we're looking at. Think about what's happening. Think about this. It's the most incredible story there is. It's the most incredible story there is. But nobody was there. Lizzo, Queen Latifah. And inside, there were protesters regarding Israel, Gaza, Palestine. Do you believe, do, are, are we led to believe that they paid, or, or, or their, their blocks, their, their, their organizations paid 250 bucks a pop for them to yell and scream? There's also no pictures. There's no pictures of how this looks. There is no picture. There's no pictures. As to, as to anything. Listen to what I'm telling you. There is no collection of huge crowds waving from inside. Spend your day today. Just scour this and compare it to Trump's reaction. Stand by, dear friends. We have a lot to talk about, a lot to discuss. Big time here. As we go through everything, do you hear me? Now, my friends, make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you are subscribed and make sure you are a part of our family. Make sure you like this. Make sure you hit the little button so you're always notified of live streams and new videos. And before we begin, and we're going to be talking also about this, this disaster in Baltimore, which which the news in the news media are saying, never mind, move along. But many of you centurions and many of you truth centuries are saying, wait a minute, what is this going to do to things like food supplies and farming? Listen carefully because emergency food now is a critical subject. 
Let's talk about a very serious subject, emergency food. That's right, emergency food. Now, I know at first blush, it's difficult for most people to think about something that they just, just take for granted, ever reaching, you know, emergency status. We're used to stores always being open, deliveries always made, no supply chain disasters, no, no ransomware catastrophes, you know, shutting down gas stations, no trucking strikes, no war, no protests from farmers, no mysterious Chinese weather balloons, nothing, nothing catastrophic in terms of weather. Well, that can't happen to us, right? And I understand it's a defense mechanism that we have because the idea of ever not being able to eat or locate food is seemingly incomprehensible to most people. But think about this. It's not. That's why it's time for you to go to my site, preparewithlionel.com. Preparewithlionel.com has the deal of deals for you. Take it as a, as a starter set, an introduction set. You've been putting off emergency food for too long. Some people still have a thing about prepping as though prepping for emergency is foolish. Now, right now, you can save $200 on the three-month emergency supply kit. This is unbelievable. 22 varieties with a 25-year shelf life, 25 years, 2,000 calories a day in six rugged buckets, 120 pounds of food. Could you go three months, 90 days if stores close? Be honest. Could you go a week without any trips to the store? I don't think so. I'm not talking about having stuff in your cabinet. I'm not talking about banana chips and jerky. I'm talking about food, real food. So go right now to preparewithlionel.com. This moment right now, preparewithlionel.com, preparewithlionel.com. Go now and thank me later. Remember, dear friends, they're always lying to you. They're always lying to you. They're always trying to change perception. They're always, they want you to feel something and believe something that's just simply not there. They are desperate. And when you saw... Barack Obama coming off of the plane using the child's entrance, the Air Force One child's entrance, that little four-step thing off the bottom in the luggage hold. Did you see this? Because this man simply cannot make it up the stairs anymore. I remember, I'm not trying to mock somebody because they're old. I hope we're all old. But do you see what's happening? Look, even that. And you know who looks really bad too? Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton cl can't close his mouth. He walks around with a, his mouth is always open. These are, we had four presidents in New York City last night. Four presidents. We haven't seen this since, I believe it was the 10th anniversary. It was in 2021. I believe, I believe it was then. It was when we had the 9-11 uh, uh, version of this. Now, I got to tell you something, dear friends. I've got to tell you something, and this is critical. This is absolutely 100% critical. If I can do one thing, my goal is not necessarily to just read headlines. That's not what I'm into. I, 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 that, that, that doesn't interest me. You don't need me to read headlines for you. We can do that. You can do that on your own. You don't need to say, and today somebody, oh, look at this. But I want to see what's happening in terms of changes. I'm always looking to see how things are changing drastically. And what the what the movements are, what the how things are working. Do you hear what I'm saying? Let me give you an example. Let me let me throw some things at you and, and tell you why this is important. First and foremost, so that you understand this, I am not of any political party. If you have heard me for certainly before 2016, certainly before that, I have been telling you from the beginning to quote Emerson, Lake and Palmer, I am not the member of a political party. They mean nothing to me. Left and right is an illusion. Carol Quigley, tragedy of hope, probably. This was the fellow, by the way. This was a fellow who was Bill Clinton's mentor, I think at Georgetown. This is the, the expert on secret organizations. Okay? This Carol Quigley. This is important. And the notion of left and right, his analogy was always, you need them, but they have to be identical. 
I don't know if he said that, but somebody suggested one time, imagine, imagine two drunks walking home, holding each other up. Imagine. that. Like this. And I'm leaning on you when you're leaning on me. And they have to be identical so that you can switch every four years. You could say, throw the bums out. And you get two sides of the same coin. They look different, but it's the same coin. Critical understanding. You must, before we begin to, before we, because we don't talk enough about politics, at least a lot of our brethren, we, they talk about things that are important. There is still the rule. You can talk about gambling all you want. You can talk about lines. You can talk about the spread. You can talk about whatever it is that you want. It doesn't matter to me, but you have to look at the game. There is a game. And you can talk about all the, uh, you know, the overs and unders, but there is a game going on, and that's the election. If Trump wins... It's the chance to do as much as possible to go in and for him to change everything as fast as he can before they indict him, impeach him, remove him, or worse. Let me say this again and listen to me carefully. When Trump wins, I was talking to a friend of mine from the UK on his show the other day. It was very, very good. It was excellent. And as you know, I am not one to necessarily glad hand people. I'm not. I'm not a rah rah uh, guy. I'm not one of the. Hey, we're gonna win. Well, we might win, but not necessarily. His name is Sean Atwood. Very, very nice. Good, good egg. Good egg from the UK. And he said, "What do you believe?" And I said, "Right now, as of today, you know, barring of course the quote unforeseen, I think Trump's gonna win. I'm feeling it. And the reason why is remember." He's not going to win. The only reason why I say he won't win is if they steal it legally or something else, but not because of the momentum. I do not believe that there is an anti-Trump momentum to such an extent that it overwhelms and outdoes a pro-Biden movement. Let me say this again. There has always been anti-Trump, but it's not the same. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's not the same. It's there, but what will not ever be suggested or 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 recommended or dare I say even agreed to is the following. And listen. What they did to him and what they have been doing to him, everybody has said, has had a weird change. It didn't, It listen to me, it didn't necessarily turn them towards Trump. But what it did was something even more important. What it did was it, it changed a, it, it lessened the anti-Trump momentum. Does that make sense to you? I don't know if it converted people and people said, hey, I'm going to vote for him. Why? Well, because he's being treated unfairly. I don't know about that. That I'm not sure of. I That that doesn't seem to be part of the uh, cephalogical calculus, okay? But I do see people losing that immense and intense anti-Trump fervor, which was critical. Number two, Joe Biden is a disaster. Remember what I'm saying. They cannot inch to the front line. Do you know how much Adderall he must have been through last night? They had a they had a a, a fundraiser on on a, what was it the Essex House or that's where the money was. That's where he made the money. Cocktails, yeah, that's where they made the money. This was a bust. Do me a favor today, Patriot. Look through. Look, you see nothing. You see nothing. Four presidents in New York City since uh, since one of the 9-11, I, th I think the 10 years, it's nowhere to be found. And there was Trump. Trump was out on Massapequa, and the rule was, they say NYPD was said, told them, do not get near him, do not stand behind him, but, but Suffolk County Police and others do it. There is a groundswell. 
This man has got it. Fallen police officers. This man gets it. It's one of those things where you you look, they're they're trying. The remember one thing, these people are not but die hard. Let me say this again quickly. Listen to me carefully. Nobody is a die hard Biden advocate. Nobody says, I love his message. I love what he stands for. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. Doesn't work that way. What he is and what we're seeing is people who say, well, he's anti-Trump, which is not good. See, I want you to vote for me and not against the other guy. Voting for me will sustain me. Voting against the other guy means there was nothing there. It's like you'll do. Um, it's like a grudge. You know what I mean? It's there's no you're not you're not into this thing. There is nothing. Americans, no matter what. And listen, dear friend, this is the greatest news. Americans, left progressives, are not into this insane world involving LGBTQIA. Watch if, if you j- just watch if anything if for just for comic relief, John Kennedy shows the, I don't know where these from these, these, did you see this airhead snowboarder that they sent up there? They set this kid up to argue carbon dioxide. I mean, this was, they, they don't even care about their own. They have no, they have no decency, none. None. So that's the good news. The other good news is that there's no way he can sustain this. You have to have a debate. You can't wish Trump looks better than, let me ask you a question. True, true or false. Trump looks the same, if not better than he did in 2015. Nine years later. Simple question. Does Trump look the same or better than he looked in 2015? Forget the, forget the, you know, he might dye his hair. There was one time when he had white hair. I thought he looked terrific. I thought he looked great. Now I'm not, please, I want your answers. I don't want you to, you, you don't have to be nice. Nobody, no, oh, Cheryl Callahan. Let me say, let me just say a special shout out to Cheryl Callahan who does the countdowns. Don't think, Cheryl, I don't see you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Cheryl does the count. Cheryl is, oh, aces. We love you. Thank you very much. I'm going to give you hand farts for Carol. Haven't done hand farts? No. Those are lousy. There we go. Oh, more basso profundo. Carl says he looks better but overweight. You know what? It's okay. He's not wasting away. You're right. If he, but Carl, good point. But let me tell you something. If he lost weight, what would they say? If Trump all of a sudden lost 20 pounds, he could look 50 pounds of being better. What would they say? He's sick. I'm telling you, he can't lose weight. I know this sounds nuts. They wouldn't say, hey, he's getting in shape. They say, oh, no, no, he's sick. See? This is how these bastards think. I'm telling you. Everybody else, they look, I mean, look, uh, 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 Obama looks, he's in great shape. He still has got that, st- when he, did you see him when he came off that, when when he kind of came off the uh, step? This was, t- visuals and stagecraft, he doesn't get. When he came off of the step from the from the plane, he kind of does a little, not, not a run, but there's, huh, there's, there's, there's uh, Will Gear. You know, Burt Mustin hanging on. By the way, I did one of the funniest. V- uh, did anybody get the Marty Allen joke? I don't think anybody. I'm living in the past. I'm living in the 60s from game shows and Mark Goodman, Bill Todd. And, you know, Marty, Marty Allen. Remember Allen and Rossi? No, of course not. I'm a child of the 60s with that Sam Bankman free. We'll get to that in a moment. But anyway, so that's that. This is incredible. This is this is good news. Now remember, 
The only thing he's got to realize is that they steal it legally. Steal it legally. But there is no way, no way, no way, no way, no way. Ladies and gentlemen, Graham Murphy. Graham, I have not seen your name. Who is filtering Trump picks for 2024 key roles? By the way, Graham, thank you. Excellent questions. I hope Jared Kushner has nothing to do with this. Let me say something to you. Jared Kushner, I hope Trump screamed at him and said, did you say you were going to, you were looking forward to oceanfront property in Gaza? It sounds like a, like a George Strait song. Remember, I'm going to buy you some oceanfront property in Arizona. Remember that song? Or did, did I, did I hear what you just said? Did I, did, did, did I hear what you said? Did you say this? Did you did you say that Palestine was a concept? Did you say this? Can you tell me what drug somebody slipped you? Because we're going to call the FBI because either one of two things. Somebody slipped you a drug or you've lost your mind. Unbelievable. Graham Murphy says, I hope Newt Gingrich is nowhere near this either. Oh, I'm with you. Oh, I'm with you. I'm with you. I would have him, Graham, I would have people work with him that you may or may not. For example, I would have a group of people, and I would want nobody to know. And I would want everybody. I would listen to everybody. I would listen to all of the contingents. I don't want the hardcore. Let me tell you something who really needs to work on her game, who I would change I would soften up, I would change a little bit and dial it down is Tulsi Gabbard. Carrie Lake can be nowhere near me. Um, I want people to, I, I want, he has got to address something. And there's, the, there's that 800 pound, you know, gorilla, the elephant in the room. And I have to say this, the Democratic Party is just ignoring Israel. Now, I'm going to say the following in terms of political, political strategy. Israel, Gaza, Palestine cannot be ignored anymore. It has to be addressed. You can't ignore it. You can't say everything great and we're going to be it. No. A couple of things happen and I want you to listen very carefully and people are noticing. Joe Rogan is the most important media person today. Do you hear what I'm saying? Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan is, and you can say, well, I don't care whether you, look, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not agreeing with, I'm telling you the reality. It's just like, there are some shows that are this funny. There are people who watch, uh, there are people who fish, and I don't understand fishing or playing golf, and I don't understand it. So my my thought means nothing. Remember one thing. This is another one of Lionel's rules. Make it, Miss Callahan. Make sure you make notes of this. We're going to publish my rules here. I don't care what you think. I care what they think. If I owned a restaurant, I would have food in there I don't eat. If I could buy, if somebody said you want to buy a bar in New York, it'd be a gay bar, high end. Make more money than you can imagine. So much money. Gay bar. I mean, really, first class. I don't have to tell you that I'm not a member of that demographic. The point is, what I think has nothing to do with what I agree with. When, when, when I bring stories to you about Diddy, about Cat Williams, about Shannon Sharp, about what's going on with Monique, it's not because I am a, I am a fastidious fan of this particular uh, uh, entertainment uh, platform, I am telling you that these are critical aspects of my, this is a huge part, the African-American world. And they have been so quiet. There is nothing. I'm going to say this. Do you think that odd, honey, that, that uh, George Clooney wasn't there or that you got the, the big, any, 
any. Remember this. Remember this. This is important. When you are a big star, you got to get clearance from, I don't know if you're, I don't know if it's CAA or if it's used to be uh, uh, whatever, the, who, who, whoever these folks are. And even the, the, because the entertainment world is collapsing. And as Breitbart said perfectly, politics is downhill from entertainment. So they will say, I will let you go there, provided this does not hurt your image, your name, your whatever it is. Queen Latifah. I kind of like, by the way, she's a great singer. Did you ever hear her do poetry, man? It's fantastic. Barbara Streisand has got nothing to lose. Barbara Streisand is set. She's not there. George Clooney, a Spielberg, all the folks they have. Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro. In, you know how many people live in New York? None of them. Nowhere near it. Why do you think that is? Graham Murphy says, Trump needs a close relationship with Erdogan. He's the key for Trump. Sunnis respect Erdogan and the Shia don't mess with him. Only Muslim leader in NATO too. Trump got on well with him before. You know what, uh, Graham? Uh, you show a level of sophistication that unfortunately is not shared by... A lot of people. I'm sorry to say this, dear friend. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say this. Uh, but it just does not work that way. Erdogan, to most people, from Turkey, right, uh, is not someone that folks are going to necessarily uh, dig, but I agree with you. Let me tell you something. What is the most important thing in the world? The most important thing in the world, and I mean this sincerely, is that there needs to be a complete and total review of how we deal with this, this lunacy, this absolute lunacy of NATO. All right, I'm going to say this again. We'll get to that later. I want you to think, though, for the following. I want you to think, what is it that Americans, what is it that Americans are going to deal with? Do you think, dear friend, and thank you, by the way, for your kindness, do you believe that there is a, uh, how do I say this? Do you believe that there is a, a world of, I guess you would say, do you believe that there's a world of concern over that? I don't believe so. Do you believe so? No. 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 What do Americans care about? Dear friends, let me ask you something. I want you to imagine you are on my you are on my team. And I want you to do something. I have I have invited you in, and you were on the you were on the uh, the Trump team, so to speak. And I want you to give me one word, one word, one word to explain specifically what Americans in this vote are going to respond to. You hear what I'm saying? And listen carefully. I'm not suggesting that NATO is unimportant. I'm not suggesting that Turkey is unimportant. Or five eyes, or any, I'm, 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 I'm not saying that. What do you think, knowing what you know about America, what do you think is going to be critical? What is this? Owen says crime right off the bat. Crime, border, West, border, Sue, border, Kate, border. But you can't say crime. And you can't merely say border. You have to say, let me give you the numbers since 2020. Okay. What if I told you, you know, you gained a pound. Well, that's not bad. 
Do you know how much you've gained since the beginning of the year? Wait a minute. <laughs> you see how it different? You may have gained a pound this week, but you put on 20s. And said, well, that's it. Crime may be this. Let me tell you what happened in crime since 2020. News Scoop USA blog spot. I like that. Face it, America is over. No, sir. No, sir. I thank you for that. No, sir. America is not over with you. We are not over yet. Yet. But I do agree with you one thing, sir, and I thank you for this. I do agree with you on one thing. If America does collapse, it will not be from outside. It will be from within. Within. We will collapse internally. It will be an implosion. It will be a controlled demolition, to use language you might be somewhat familiar with. It will not be because of China. It will not be because of Russia or, you know, in the Middle East. No, 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 no. It will be from inside. And what do you think is the word? What do you think is the word? What do you think? What is it? What is it that would kill us, that would hurt us the most? It's our will, our will to live, our will to resist, our will to fight back, our will to our will to resist. Do you hear what I'm saying? Our will to fight, our will to, that that's the stuff which is the most critical. But the thing is, is that Trump has to make sure he tells people specifically, this is what's going on. This is what's going on regarding crime. This is what's going on regarding, this is what's happening. This is what's happening. This, this is the story. This is where we need to address this. This, this is what's critical. And he's got to explain it. And he's got to put the word out. And he has to say, you know what I'm going through. We're not going to talk about this enough. We're not going to talk about this. I have to tell you something in your own, in your own way of speaking. Stand by for one second, my friends. I want you to listen to me very carefully. I mentioned this the other day, and I'm going to say this again to you, about our good friend, Mike Lindell. Now, normally, I, I, I put together kind of like a, like a produced piece, so to speak. And I want you to see this right now. This is the link right now. I saw this because this changes every single day. Every time I put out a new one, Mike Lindell changes it from our good friends at MyPillow. Here's the link right now. MyPillow dot com slash Lionel mypillow.com promo code Lionel very very simple and he has this thing called I don't know what the $25 extravaganza my towels six piece towel sets 25 bucks promo code Lionel Giza premium my pillow queen and king size 25 bucks with promo code Lionel. They've never had anything like that. Never. Slide sandals. I know you like those. I sure do with a nice suit. 25 bucks with promo code Lionel. Two pack multi use my pillows. 25 bucks with promo code Lionel. Dog beds. Your dog. You love your dog. Your do dogs are better than people. I'm sorry, but it's true. 25 bucks, promo code Lionel. Beach towels, get ready, tis the season, 25 bucks, promo code Lionel. Four pack dish towel sets, 25 bucks, promo code Lionel. Couch and recliner pillows, everybody, 25 bucks, promo code Lionel. Can't say it any clearer than that. MyPillow.com, promo code Lionel, from the heart, we are a MyPillow home and you will too. Just go there, mypillow.com slash Lionel. One more time, just click on this. He has supported us since day one, and we return the favor. Okay? Okay. Now, remember something. Let's go back to this. What Trump has to also do is he has to remember something. He has to tell people. Fanny Willis. Oh, don't let the world lose that. Fanny Willis. 
is fighting desperately to put him in prison. And they had a hearing yesterday, which was very interesting. And they were arguing some stuff. I don't want to say it's arcane by any stretch, but it was a little bit, well, it was, I don't know what the word is, a little, a little recondite, dare I say, about whether the, um, the uh, predicate acts could themselves be illegal, whatever. And what's really critical to note, what's really fascinating to note, I think, dear friend, is something even more interesting. If I were President Trump, I would make it very, very easy. I want to say something to you. Say something to you. That in a way that will ring with you. Do you know what the Biden administration has done to stop MS-13? This is when I left office and I told you about MS-13. Does he use racketeering? Oh, absolutely. That's what that that's what you use. MS-13, they've got a name. When you have a name, the Colombo, the Gambinos, the Lucchese's, you know, the Genovese family, the Bonanos, when, when they have a name, the Hells Angels, the, the Nomads, MS-13, they've got a name and they've got names tattooed on their forehead. And this is classic criminal enterprise. Ladies and gentlemen, dear Trump voters, potential, Joe Biden hasn't done anything, nothing, but they're going after me and people I don't even know. We haven't even met. I don't even know this. Have you seen the pictures of the black defendants of the, of the, of this, this team of, of conspirators? <laughs> These, it's the most, does he, does this look like a Trump support? What is this? Fanny Willis gets away with murder. John Eastman, they want to go after. They went after Sidney Powell. Rudy Giuliani, who turned New York City around. He was the greatest. I mean, oh, he's got, he had a lot of uh, uh, negative stuff. No doubt about that. But they went after him. They wanted to spar him in New York. They wanted to spar him in Washington. And they had these people. All of a sudden, you'll see a name. Somebody will bring up a, a case for his disbarment because he dared to advance an idea which was contrary to, I guess, accepted realms of judicial and legal creativity. I've got to be able to, to be free as a lawyer to, to promote theories which test conventional wisdom, which test the way people think. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. This is what I, by the way, the likes. How are we doing, Cheryl? How are we doing, Lizzie? How are we doing? How are we doing on likes, everybody? Let me check. Let me see how you fine, fine fans are doing. Let me see this. How are you doing on likes? 264 likes. I need 9,000. I know. I know. And by the way, you see that right there? There's at the top. It says Lionel Legal. This is a brand new, brand new little adjunct. We're spreading out, folks. We're spreading out. Because more people have an interest, I think, in, in legal stuff, and as we do now. But as to the real nuts and bolts of it, not, not the theoretical. But in any event, I digress. Has there been one move, one anything, filed against Fannie Willis for perjury, for obstruction of justice, for witness tampering ever? No. No. I can't. I shan't. I will never understand it as long as I live. You hear me? As long as I live. I do not understand it as long as I live. You understand this? As long as I live. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't, I don't. 
They 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 took things and they converted. They lied about stuff. You okay? So that's that. So going back to what I said, last night was a disaster. Nobody was there. Nobody was there. Now I mentioned to you before, Joe Rogan, uh, Seth Rogan, if I recall, a lot of the Rogans, um. Others, people are saying, they're asking questions. They will not say the word genocide. It is verboten. Okay, fine. AOC is making, she, the other day, if I read to you what she said, didn't tell you who it was, you would say, that makes a lot of sense. Who said that? AOC. No, no, seriously, who said it? AOC. She was on with Jake Tapper, and he didn't know what to do because they are scared out of their minds. Now, let me explain something to you, and this may come as a surprise. And this is where we've always, you're, you're like me, where we always find ourselves in lives, in life, in trouble. Speaking the truth. Speaking the truth. Saying, no, 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 that's the way this is. Speaking the truth. The truth is the only, the truth will not set you free. The truth will get you canned. The truth will get you uh, shot down. The truth is, the truth is the problem. They do not like the truth at all, at all. So what's interesting to note and what's critical, and I can't say this enough, is as follows. You're seeing this movement. When Joe Rogan was on with Kid Rock, Kid Rock, I think is a Cretan. I hope I haven't hurt anybody's feelings. Why this dunderhead is looked to for anything. This is not, if, 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 listen, it's a free country. But if Kid Rock is your idea of complex political ideations, and you can also tell from this Joe Rogan, you know, Kid Rock has changed so much. I, I didn't even, I didn't know who he was. I didn't, I didn't recognize him without his usual accoutrement. And Kid Rock is talking about going in there and bombing and bombing and killing. And they say, no, wait, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Hold it. What are you talking about? And right now, as we speak, Democratic, Democratic, liberal, progressive Hollywood is saying, what do we do here? They are not in favor. They are not in favor of war. Remember when the Democrats and the liberals in the old days used to stand for against war? When you see the when you, you see horrors that are just beyond anything, and Joe Rogan gave the um Joe Rogan gave the um the okay. Joe Rogan gave the okay. We're looking right now about the official number. Now, this, I forget, of people killed in Gaza. Gaza. 30,000. Over 30,000. Let me ask you something. Do you hear anybody talk about this? Now, hear what, I, hear what I'm saying. and Listen carefully. We can go through this. We can argue this. I'm looking at this from a political point of view. I'm looking at it from a from an election point of view. Nobody brought this up, but last night at Radio City, you have people who got in there somehow. I guess they paid two hundred and whatever bucks a piece to go there and scream, "Blood on you, Biden! Shame on you!" or whatever it was. How do you think that works? Tell me. What does that do to the Democratic Party? They're sitting around there and they're thinking, "Wait a minute, what, what's going on here?" And this is not about. This is not. This is really critical. And you've got these folks. And when I saw, when I heard the list of the performers, let, let me let me give you an idea. This is my favorite, okay? Um, Radio City Biden fundraiser performers, okay? Now, let me, let me let's, let's go through this A-list group. You ready for this? A-list. This is from Vogue magazine. Listen to this, Vogue. And it reads, this is this is the headlines. Biden exclamation point. 
Obama, Clinton, musical performances galore inside the record-breaking presidential fundraiser at Radio City Music Hall. Bill Clinton looks like Dick Van Dyke. And he does the old, ah. all right? This is Vogue. And outside, there are no pictures of anybody. This is Vogue. And all I see, there's Joe smiling, got nice, nice veneers and caps. Stephen Colbert. Stephen Colbert. CBS saying, we are officially putting one of ours on board. Officially. Stephen Colbert. Okay. Let me give you this. Now I'm going to give you this. You're 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 going to get and I just want you to just 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 the biggest names, the biggest. You ready for this? <clears throat> and Mrs. L can help me because she knows this. <clears throat> I'm always up saying who? Cynthia Erivo. Who is that? Oh. A Broadway actress, color purple. Cynthia Erivo. Anybody ring a bell? Okay. Queen Latifah. All right. She's good. Singer. Not exactly A-list. Not exactly. No cutting edge. Lizzo. Manufactured star doing BLM. Leah Michelle. And Ben Platt, Broadway people, right now. Now, here, 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 do you know what this is? This is the people. This is the A-list group they have for the biggest people. Now, do you believe they raised twenty-five million dollars? Anybody believe that? Do you believe that? Anybody? Anybody? I don't know if they believe it there. They they have twenty five million. Dollars. I'm sure they from someplace. That was a fact. Why are there no pictures of crowds and happy? It's all police, protesters, nothing. If you've got pictures, if you've got people, if you've got people like this inside the house clapping, where you get to see how many does it hold? Uh, Fifty five hundred. That was a wash. And Stephen Colbert, when you can sit for an evening of Lizzo? Do you understand what's happening here? This is their night. They could have called anybody that won. They could have said, now listen, 5,960 seats. They could have said, I want, think about this. Who were the people who were not there who could have been there? Barbara Streisand. Robert De Niro. Um, oh, yeah. Al Pacino. Ron Howard. Al, Ron Howard has nothing to do with this. Al Pacino really nothing to do with it. But, but, but Robert De Niro, Mr. Big Mouth, who loves the curse. Oh, really? Okay, Ron Harry. Yeah, they, they, they've all done it. So where are they? It could have been that you're going to pay us back or we're through. You are through. We own you. Where was Oprah? Where's Oprah? Where's, where's, if you want to go for names, Oprah, you want to bring in the, this is a heavily, tell, tell me what the demographic is. And when you go there, when they put out Lizzo, what does this say? There's a lot of Democrats. I'm saying, but I, I, Lizzo, I don't know who that, I, 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 what does that mean? What does that mean? You could have had the biggest, the biggest, who would George Clooney, who are the big stars now? George Clooney, uh, Bradley Cooper, go down the list, go, just go down Robert Downey Jr., right? Go down to uh, everybody who won one of those uh, Academy Awards. They could have been any, I mean, it could have been like, you owe us for this. This is not about the money. This is to send the message out so that somebody in Ohio can say, wow, she's great. They're great sports stars. Anybody, do you think Cat Williams is going to be? No. Monique, no. Who? 
No comedians because of Colbert, because he's not a comedian. He might have been, but he's not. He is so, he is so, oh, this is, ladies and gentlemen, listen to what I'm saying. This is the biggest oh no moment. They won't be able to do it. They won't be able to do it. Do you hear me? They won't be able to do it. This is the thing I'm saying, my friends. This is the thing that I am saying to you. This is the thing I'm trying to tell you. This is the greatest news for us. Now, are you following what's happening regarding Baltimore? No. Why isn't anybody talking about that? I don't know. All Trump has to do is don't talk about conspiracy theories. Don't talk about, just talk about how many, do, when I read, I don't know about you, how much freight, um, uh, food, diesel, uh, how it affects uh, fertilizer. I mean, I could not believe what I was seeing. All you have to do is bring it up. What this will do. Joe Biden says, we're going to take care of it. No, we're not. Janet Yellen said, no, 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 no. I put something on my on my Twitter that I reposted from somebody who said, look, I'm a, he says, I don't think there's anything, whatever. He, he He's a, somebody says, but they use these kind of like skeleton crews and they're not really, you know, whatever. I know people don't want to think that. I know people want to see as there being some kind of a cabal or some type of a conspiratorial consortium. I don't know if there's any evidence of that, fine, but I haven't heard any yet. But either way, these are things, these are considerations, my friend, that are so critical. And I want to read something to you last night, another thing that Trump should bring to people's attention. And this blows my mind. I still cannot believe what I heard. Listen to this. This absolutely is chilling, okay? This one got me like you cannot believe. And uh, uh, hang on. And this is the part that got, listen to this. This is from CNN. So if CNN says it, it, it kind of means more because it, they're very reluctant to give any kind of bad news about anything, especially now. Because they are the they are the uh, proxy of the radical left. Okay. Human trafficking fueled fraud. Think about that. Is exploding in Southeast Asia with organized crime rings raking in close to three trillion with a T. Three trillion dollars in illicit revenue annually. This is according to the head of Interpol. Did you hear this? One international organized crime group makes fifty billion dollars a year, according to Interpol Secretary General Jurgen Stock, adding that two to three trillion of illicit money has flown through the global financial system annually. To compare this, France's economy is 3.1 trillion, according to the IMF. With drug trafficking contributing to around 40 to 70 percent of organized crime income, criminal groups are also using smuggling networks to illegally move humans. Remember, I told you something. I told you something which is very important, very, very critical. And this is something that I wanted you to understand. Years ago, there was a fellow named, uh, he was a very nice man, guy I know. He is, uh, well, I think you might call him a, you might call him a, a wise guy, all right? And this wise guy said something very interesting. He said, you know, they could stop us anytime they wanted. They could do anything they wanted, anything. They could stop us, the mob, the mafia. By the way, 666, I see that more often than not, all the time, numbers watching, 666. 
He said they could stop us anytime they wanted to, but they don't. They could stop us, meaning the mob, uh, Chinese triads, Albanian groups, Russians, uh, name it. Name it. MS-13. They could stop at any time. Any time. But they don't because they want to use and maintain our networks. They want to put their blood in our veins. And that's why it is posited by many people that the reason why these gangs, these organizations remain open is that governments take a cut. If there's a $3 trillion um, activity, you think governments are going to stop that? You think they're going to wipe $3 trillion off the book? No, they're going to want a piece of it. They'll cut down some. They'll have some raids here and there. They're not going to let that go. And I'm not talking about this government. I'm talking about worldwide governments. That's the thing that kills me. $3 trillion. We have a bridge that is going to be, you're not, that bridge is going to be there if there's anything you would think that the Biden administration, that Pete Booty Giggity Giggity Giggity, who doesn't do anything, if you think there's one thing for his legacy, he would own this story. I'm here every day. Here's the latest. To pretend, start, start, putting boats out there in the harbor. I don't care if they're just in an armada. So here we are. We're going to get this up before you know it. If I do one thing, East Palestine, he looked the other way. He hasn't done anything. This might be the only thing, unless they're telling him, don't do it. Governments want a piece of the action. It's it's that simple. I mean, if you want to do corruption, look at Mexico. The whole cunt, the whole place. The cartels are new armies. We have to declare war. You know, it's so funny. We always talk about the Navy SEALs. We're talking about, let's go to Russia. Let's go over here and Gaza. Okay, fine. You know what? With all due respect, and I mean this, I want all of that to be stopped. I want the bloodshed and carnage and human life to be stopped. However, I can only talk about and think about my country. And we need to declare war on Mexico. And these affiliated cartels that are that are intertwine into the actual subject or the, the structure of the government itself. Do you hear what I'm saying? If Trump said that, with policemen standing behind, policemen, tell a story. Tell a story about the number of police officers, slain police officers. Tell them. Tell them about the story. Tell them about who these people are. Tell them what they did. Tell them, tell them, look at the fallen heroes. Tell them about who was Jonathan Diller. This is his family. These are the brothers and sisters who keep us safe. And show, show a parade. Black, white, male, female. Um, uh, some wear turbans. This is it. This is the front line. This is the front line against anarchy, against perfidy. These brave people. And what do they do? What does the Democrat want to do? They want to defund these gentlemen. And it changes an attitude. It emboldens the bad guys, emboldens the criminals, and lets them know that the government and the public are not behind them 100%. That has got to stop. And that's from the top down. And I would also, if I were Trump, say, this is not Joe Biden's fault. Because Joe Biden doesn't have any say. He is told what to do. Joe Biden is not in charge of anything. Do not blame Joe Biden. Look at him. Do you think this man sits in his office? This man, has, his, this is the guy who, by the way, remember, I'm telling you this again. This is a guy whose son sold finger paintings for how many million? I, who knows? In the biggest scam anybody has ever even seen. The biggest scam anybody has even seen. It is beyond. By the way, Raul Rodriguez, I'm sorry, Raul. Can the U.S. remain solvent without illicit trade? Uh, yes, because it will create, it will create um, its own. Uh, <laughs> it'll just add some zeros to this imaginary ledger. And Edie Crowley, thank you so much, Edie. Thank you for that. I did not. I'm sorry, I missed you there. Sorry, my apologies. 
They're going after me. John Stewart overvalues price. He's trying to pull up, you know, that they, this is the weakest of the arguments. To be honest with you, but basically, what 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 Stewart did, and by the way, Stewart is so lost. He just doesn't have his A game. Doesn't have his fastball. Doesn't just does. I don't want to say this because I think I'm in his. I, I think I'm older than he is, but he looks. He just looks to me. Doesn't he look like somebody from, I don't know what. Kids don't know who he is. He took, he left during the best time of his career. And now he's trying to insinuate himself back with this. I'm the voice of reason. And it's just not working. So there's good news, my friends. Good news. Good news. Watch what is happening. And today. Just do me a favor when we regroup tonight. Make sure you look. It's just where are the stories of the crowds? Where? Where were the firsthand accounts? Nowhere. Where were the, the big names last night? The big names, De Niro, Barbara Streisand, uh, all of the, go down the list. All of the people from LA. You think one of those guys would say, oh, I'll take care of this. Oh, we'll have them there. We own you. We own you. But even the houses, the even the agencies, even the Hollywood say, we can't get near this guy. We'll we'll speak about you in a titular sense. Studio heads are, you know, we'll, we'll, but we cannot. Lizzo? Let me go through this name again. Okay? Cynthia Erivo. Queen Latifah, Lizzo, Leah Michelle, and Ben Platt. Not Oliver Platt. I could understand that. Ben Platt. What is this? It sounds like a cruise ship. And moderated by Stephen Colbert, a man who was basically phoned it in for so long. He is beyond irrelevant. How about the other day? Wouldn't even apologize to Kate Middleton. They're going to sue his ass. He basically, I don't, and and I don't, and in this respect, I think he he can say whatever he wants. But this is what's happening right now, my friends. This is what's happening now. Listen to me very carefully. I also, you have been terrific. Make sure you follow as as is linked here, as is pegged. This is the the uh, link to the new line of legal. But I want you to do me a favor right now before I want you to promise me. I want you to go immediately, and and immediately. Go to Lynn's Warriors on YouTube, and I want you to subscribe. She's going to be doing live videos. We're going to be doing more of a team. She's got stuff. Wait till you, you cannot believe. She did a story the other day. I'm still legalized kidnapping in Hawaii. No one, is it, what? The story I read to you about these Asian trafficking, she gave that. She scours. She goes through. The, and her you her Twitter channel, oh, everybody steals from that. Oh, I can give you a list. Oh, if she puts a story up, you can wait until now. Watch this one. Is it up yet? Oh, there it is. We know exactly. It's it's. And by the way, you, there, there's no ownership to stories. Of course, we understand that. But it just goes to show you the people in the biz recognize the fact that she is absolutely on fire. So Lynn's Warriors, Lynn's Warriors, and it's a subject you would think that most people would agree with. Namely, in protecting children. So anyway, dear friends, Raul, Edie, News, Scoop, Graham Murphy, thank you all, you wonderful, glorious bastards. You, you want to, that's a, that's a reference to that movie, but you, you are, you, it's so wonderful. It's such an honor to speak with you, to start my day. Well, not, a, you know what time I was eating breakfast this morning? You know what time? 3.30. 3.30. I'm just, and then I'm just, I don't know what the hell's going on here. I'm living in a, another time zone. But anyway, but this is really starting the day. Sun comes up in a sleepy little town right around San Antonio. I, I, be, I believe uh, Tom Johnston said it best. So anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Follow Lynn's Warriors. I want you to subscribe right now. Go to YouTube and follow Lynn's Warriors. All right, dear friends, have a great and a glorious and an excellent day. Don't ever change. I mean that sincerely. And until next time, until this evening, don't forget, 
Hit that subscribe button. I got more videos coming up. Until then, remember, the monkey's dead. The show's over. Sue you. That, that.